Hello, everyone. My name is Priscilla Baker, and I am the academic advisor for the Biological Systems Engineering Department here at Virginia Tech. I'm going to start out by letting my fellow panelists introduce themselves. These are all three of them are BSE seniors in the program, and I am going to have them take it away. Madeline, go ahead. Hi, everyone. My name is Madeline. Um, like Ms. Baker said, I'm a senior in BSC graduating in May. Uh, the track within BSC that I'm focused on is the environmental uh, science and watershed science track. Um, and my post-grad plans are I'm going to be working for the Fairfax County Department of Public Works. Yeah. Hey, guys, I'm Kieran. Um, I'm also a senior in BSC, and I'm on the health professions track. So I am pre-med, too. And my goal um, upon graduation is to scribe for a year and apply to medical schools um, and then hopefully become a physician someday. And hello, everyone. My name is Jessica. I'm also a senior. Um, like Madeline, I'm also in the environmental and watershed science track. And um, I'm graduating in May and I'll be attending grad school in the fall. Excellent. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, we are going to head right on in to our PowerPoint presentation, giving you an overview of our program. Biological systems engineering, for all of you who aren't exactly sure what that is, um, it combines different focuses of science. So chemistry, physics, biology, um, and kind of combines all of those to solve real world, real world problems. Um, and, you know, you learn skills, engineering skills, problem solving skills, um, and then you use this background in science to um, combine with those engineering and problem solving, problem solving skills to solve uh, small scale and large scale issues. Okay, so yeah, BSC is um, pretty broad. We work from with we work with living things from the nano scale to the macro scale, um, from proteins to bacteria to huge things like watersheds, um, and they can have a real um, real impact on the world. So what is BSC? So overall, it's a community that, like I said, connects engineering and biology to solve complex, critical problems that affect, you know, anywhere from a small community uh, like Virginia Tech to, you know, towns, cities, even world problems like global warming. Um, so really, the curriculum allows you to focus on meaningful challenges. So, you know, things that need improving, um, how can we as engineers solve those problems with relation to environmental quality, health, biotech, food engineering. Um, so, you know, anyone who graduates with this degree from Virginia Tech can work in large corporations, in government agencies, nonprofit organizations, um, graduate and medical, medical, medical schools, excuse me. Um, so, you know, there's a wide range of opportunities that you can pursue um, with this deg degree from Virginia Tech. Um, it's very versatile and just allows you to apply your skills to solve problems that exist in our society. So BSE's mission at VT is to develop and transfer engineering knowledge and practices that will conserve natural resources. Um, so this can be a broad array of things, um, but ultimately we encourage sustainable production, processing, and the utilization of biological materials. So um, according to recent data, which is great, our undergraduate program ranks ninth in the country. Um, so, you know, although a lot of people might not know what this degree is, um, you can be assured that you're getting a quality education um, when you major in this degree at Virginia Tech. We have careers in multiple fields, and Madeline and Karen have, have both touched on those. Our students choose a path, generally by junior year within the department, that gears towards watershed science and engineering environmental health engineering, food engineering, biotechnology, or pre-med, our health professions. So those, there is some cross-referencing. There are some students who might go the watershed route and take a couple biotechnology or food-related classes um, and, and something like that in terms of their electives. But generally speaking, students choose as of their junior year, they would choose one of these paths. So you require courses freshman year, you will take an engineering sequence, freshman, fall and uh, spring. There's an English sequence. Some of you might end up with AP or IB credit for those English classes. 
a full sequence of biology. Again, some people come in with AP or IB credit for those. Same with the chemistry and the physics, depending on those scores. The math that you'll take are Calc 1 and 2, multivariable, linear algebra, and Diffie-Q. And then for the engineering courses, you've got statics, dynamics, fluids, thermo, numerical methods, and transport processes. And then there are several miscellaneous courses. We have a professional development seminar. You take a statistics class in the ISE department sorry, in the statistics department and engineering economy in the ISC department. And then of course, senior design. So for the biotechnology concentration, the BSc electives that you would take in that particular path would be, as you can see, unit ops, bioprocess engineering, protein separation, bioprocessing plant design, metabolic engineering. Um, And that's a pretty uh, chemistry heavy path as well. The OCHEM, PCHEM, BCHEM for biotech, those are all options and would prepare you for a field in the biotechnology realm. A lot of minors that people would uh, pursue while pursuing the biotechnology path are green engineering, chemistry, biomedical engineering, and systems biology. Those pair nicely with this path. Student organizations, the most popular one for students in this path would be the International Society of Pharmaceutical Engineering. And the job titles you would end up with would be something along the lines of a process engineer, a plant manager, or research scientist. For environmental health, those courses, your BSE electives would look more like this, small watershed hydrology, NPS pollution and assessment, watershed modeling, water supply and sanitation in developing countries, GIS, um, the science and chemistry classes, you would be taking environmental microbio, survey of OCHEM, water quality, and classes in the civil engineering department, intro to environmental engineering, water and wastewater, fundamentals of public health. Popular minors for that path are green engineering, watershed management, environmental science, and environmental policy and planning. Student organizations that gravitate, uh, students gravitate to would be Engineers Without Borders and Engineering World Health are two very popular ones. And your job titles in this path would be a water resource engineer or an environmental engineer, something along those lines. For food engineering, you'd be taking very similar courses to what the biotechnology folks would be taking. In addition to microbiology lab, chemistries, biochemistry, and then science in the food classes in the food science and technology department, like food chemistry and food microbiology. Many students also pair an FST minor or viticulture, which is uh, making wine um, and brewing science. Student organizations would be the food club, and your job titles would be something along the lines of a food process engineer, plant manager, and again, a research scientist. So pre-med, which is what Kieran is doing, again, you would have similar courses to the biotech folks, and then a lot of your uh, pathways education requirements would be fulfilled while simultaneously preparing for the MCATs, the principles of bio, OCHEM, psychology, sociology, genetics, BCHEM, et cetera. Popular minors for this one, chemistry, biology, and biomedical engineering, student organizations, uh, the American Medical Student Association, and of course, your job titles. Watershed science, um, those, it just differs from the environmental health in that the environmental health path, you take a few more classes in the civil department, and it's more dealing with environmental health and public health related issues as opposed to watershed science and um, clean water and sanitation and that sort of thing. But you'll see the coursework is quite similar. Popular minors are similar to the environmental health one. Uh, other additional ones, watershed management, environmental science, and geosciences, because there's a, it's a GIS heavy. Student organizations would be American Water Resources Association and the soil judging team, which we've had several past presidents in our department who've headed that up, that organization up. Your job titles would be more along the lines of being a water resources engineer or an environmental engineer. So, All right. Yeah, I think so. 
Um, go ahead. So where do people with a BSc degree go and what they what do they do? Um, it's a great question. I'm sure a lot of you have it. I know I did when I came into the program, um, but Kieran's going to talk a little bit about it on the next slide. So BSc graduates actually go into pretty well-known and high-profile companies. Um, a bunch of my friends work for many of these companies like Merck, Johnson & Johnson, DuPont, um, BP, and Hershey's. So um, there's a ton of possibilities um, with the BSc major. So more on the environmental side, um, you have environmental consulting firms, nonprofits, and government agencies. Um, I know coming from personal experience, I have applied to uh, jobs in all of these categories. Um, so, and I'll be working in the government agency uh, department. Um, but yeah, I mean, this degree prepares you for um, such a wide range of potential job opportunities. How much do PSE uh, graduates typically get paid? Um, so it's on the range from 55,000 to 80,000 bucks. And the average starting salary for an engineer um, is $57,000, which is on the lower end of BSE graduates. So um, if you like money and doing meaningful work, um, the major is <laughs> pretty good, I would say. Some fun facts about the BSE department. Um, you have a great advisor, Ms. Baker, um, that um, being that we're on the smaller side of engineering colleges, um, she is very attentive. Um, she was always in your corner, remind you of deadlines. Um, such a great resource to have, um, which isn't always the case um, in other departments or in other colleges. Um, like I said, the department is smaller, so you have a smaller student to faculty ratio, which may sound intimidating at first, having smaller class sizes, but is it is 100% to your benefit. Um, having the opportunity to get to know my professors on a more personal level has, um, you know, just, I think, accelerated my learning. Um, it's provided opportunities like research and job opportunities as well. Um, so I would say that's definitely an advantage to have with being a smaller department. And there's a 50 to 50 male to female ratio. So undergrad research is a pretty big part of BSc. More than half of our students do it. And um, it helps you learn skills and it's good preparation for industry and internships and co-ops and other things like that. Um, and it's a good way to earn cash, um, which is I'm doing paid research now, which is super nice, um, or credit, which is a nice GPA booster. Um, so currently I do research in the orthopedic mechanobiology lab. And it's really been a super cool experience. I get to work with medical students and doctors. And for me personally, it's like the perfect fit. Um, so undergraduate research is definitely um, a pretty big part of many BSc students' lives. Expanding more on what students in BSc research, um, there's engineering protein polymers, biofuel production, um, water quality and sustainability, nicotine and opioid vaccines, which are really cool. Um, I actually do some research um, more on the water quality side where we're um, de developing capacity limits for chemicals in rivers um, in Virginia. Um, so it's it's a great way to get more involved. Um, the professors here are super welcoming and they, they want to teach you and they want you, know, you to help and add to the research. Um, so it's a great opportunity to have within the department. There's a, a different side to research as well in BSc. Um, you can work in things like nanotech labs, fluvial process labs, plant synthetic labs, renewable material labs, and environmental micro labs. And um, a lot of my friends work in these different types of research fields, and many of them enjoy it. Um, one of my best friends works in the nanotech lab, and he has gained a lot from it, and it's actually influenced his whole career path. Um, because of the research he's done there, it's totally um, influenced what he wants to do in the future, like moving forward. So, yeah. Pretty cool labs here. Here's some more lab examples. Um, the water quality lab, food safety and biosensors lab. Um, just, you know, working in a laboratory and getting hands-on experience, I think really um, gives you an, an advantage when it comes to internships and job searching. Um, I know there's multiple opportunities to take lab classes within BSC, um, which is just a great way to really apply what you're learning in the classroom to um, you know, experiments and testing water, um, things like that. And yeah, one cool thing is that there's a lot of outdoor research here. Um, so whether it be the stream lab, freshwater lab, um, environmental process or river process lab, there's a ton of different options. Like, and like Madeline said, you can do a lot of these things in your classes too. And so personally, um, the outdoor research is necessarily not, uh, not necessarily relevant to what I wanna pursue, uh, but it was still super fun and memorable. And I honestly did gain a lot from it. And just adding on to what Kieran said, um, I've worked in the stream lab before. 
Um, last semester, I had a whole course that was pretty much all outdoor lab work, um, which was great. Um, we were surveying and taking water samples. Um, and it's, you know, such an, a valuable skill to have. Um, and I think it really, you know, makes you stand out um, in certain situations. So some student organizations that we have, um, BSC does have a professional society. It's called the American Society of Agricultural and Biological Engineers or ASABI. Um, there's great opportunities within this organization. There's professional development events, community service, social events, uh, like ice cream socials and pumpkin carving. Um, and it, it really is a great organization to get involved in to make a big school like Virginia Tech seem smaller. Um, and it's a great way to, you know, meet people in your major and make friends, um, you know, to help with homework and classes and lab work and all that other, th all those other things. Um, and there's also international organizations that a lot of kids in BSC are in. Um, Engineers Without Borders is a great one. Um, we've had some presidents um, of EWB from BSC, um, Student Engineering Engineers Abroad Council, Engineers for a Sustainable World. Um, so if you're in interested in international work, there are a ton of organizations that you can join. Um, so you can be surrounded by people who are like-minded. Uh, so scholarships. Um, college is expensive, you know, whether it be tuition, books, housing, um, whatever. College is, uh, it's not cheap. And so scholarships are a thing that can help a lot. So BSC gives away $133,000 in scholarships each year, um, which is a lot. That's crazy. So there's a ton of opportunities as well um, to get these scholarships, ranging from 200 to 1200 bucks or $12,000. Um, and BSC also awards grants to support undergraduates travel to professional meetings and conferences, which is always nice. So um, if you like free money, um, this could be a pretty good option. So within BSC, um, if you're interested, you could also get an accelerated graduate degree. So you would complete your undergraduate and graduate biological systems engineering degree in five years. Um, so there are some requirements. You have to have a minimum GPA of 3.4. Um, you have to find a faculty advisor that will kind of act as your uh, mentor, I would say, throughout the program, um, and then fill out the application. Um, so you pick a thesis or a research-based topic uh, that you're interested in and that a uh, faculty advisor does. Um, and then you finish your master's degree during the fifth year. So you would take during your senior year some classes that will double count for the undergraduate and the graduate degree. Um, and then one extra year um, at Virginia Tech in Blacksburg, and who wouldn't want that? And now here's a couple common questions. Um, so what is biotech first? Is BSC good for pre-med? And how does BSC differ from biomed, civil, or chemical engineering? So first, what is biotech? Uh, the field of biotechnology manipulates living organisms to, pursue, to produce a certain product on a very large scale. Um, so there's different applications of biotech, and it's super duper broad. So there's like different fields like medical, industrial, agriculture, or environmental biotechnology. And um, each requires a knowledge of microbial, genetic engineering, metabolic engineering, and synthetic biology, all which BSC kind of teaches you super well. And through this, you can um, have a variety of jobs like process engineers, plant engineers, research and development associates, and scale up scientists. And the products that um, people on the biotech path can make are biofuels, drugs and biomaterials, along with many other things. Um, BSC for pre-med. So uh, doing pre-med and BSC is probably the best or one of the best decisions I've ever made, like truthfully. Um, it's like the perfect pairing and it really sets you apart. Um, I know personally, whenever I tell people um, that I'm an engineer, like physicians or med students, I always get like a, like a whoa, like they're always surprised. And it's helped me so much thus far and I'm sure it will continue to. Um, there have been a couple people that have gone to med schools, like great med schools. I know one guy last year, um, he just got to UVA for medical school, which is very tough. One of my good friends um, is going to Illinois. So it's a very great opportunity, honestly. And um, it, it helps because it's so um, corresponding, right? So BSE requires two years of chem, um, biology, and microbio. So it will fulfill all your MCAT requirements. Um, and for your medical school requirements, there's a bunch of labs that you can take and it's not any extra coursework. It kind of blends in really nicely. So I really enjoyed it thoroughly. And now BSE versus BME. Um, so what's the difference? This is a pretty common question. Um, even I get this a lot. So BSE uses biology to focus on large scale production of things um, such as biomaterials, drugs, and other biomolecules. And there's also possible medical applications. 
um, such as drug delivery systems, vaccines, synthetic biomaterial production, and microbio research. Um, on the other hand, biomedical engineering uses, uh, it also uses biology, but it focuses more on the human body to advance specific components of medicine. Um, so it overlaps with other fields such as medical research, prosthetics, drug delivery, and medical devices. BSE versus civil engineering. So this is a very common question, and it's a question I had when I was a freshman at Virginia Tech. Uh, I came in and I was torn between the two of them. Um, and what it came down to is I wanted to focus on environmental work and environmental aspects um, of engineering, and BSC allowed me to do that. Um, so the coursework differences um, with civil, you'll be taking transportation class, structural engineering classes, construction classes, which are classes that go into civil engineering. Um, within BSC, you're taking more water quality, hydrology, um, bio and chem classes. Uh, so it's a little more focused on the environment, I would say. Um, the jobs you could get, um, I would say both uh, offer similar career paths. Um, so I have applied to a lot of environmental engineering positions. Um, they're just focused more on the uh, systems approach, I guess, water quality, natural resource protection, um, as opposed to you know, the construction of a water treatment or wastewater treatment plant. BSC versus chemical engineering. Um, so the biggest difference here is BSC uses biology and chemistry as bases um, to solve engineering problems and chemistry uses mainly just chemistry um, for to create engineering solutions. Um, so both use and learn unit operations um, like filtration, uh, separations, and then with those things that you learn, BSC degrees can apply those to food processing, biopharmaceutical production, uh, metabolic engineering, um, bioenergy production. Um, and there's actually some BSC professors that um, focus on those things as well, which is great. So BSC versus biology and microbio. Um, so the biggest difference here is that engineers in general um, kind of look at the bigger picture and, you know, how can... Uh, we as biological systems engineers um, enhance um, systems and processes to be more efficient. Um, so with biology, you would focus more on maybe how certain bacteria could, you know, produce more of a substance in your body. Um, and, you know, BSC students would kind of look at how you can um, produce, you know, a substance at an industrial level. Um, so, you know, Within a degree, you a BSc degree, you take biology and microbio classes. Um, you can take genetics classes. Um, so it's it's kind of included in the uh, the the coursework, I would say, um, just more of a systems approach to solving problems like that. And then BSc versus chemistry and biochem. Um, so kind of similar to chemical engineering, um, chemists would study smaller scale. Uh, processes. Um, and then engineers could develop large-scale industrial processes um, to, you know, induce a reaction um, or solve, you know, a chemistry-related problem. Um, so chemistry is the study of molecules and substances. Um, biochem is the study of organic molecules um, and reactions that make up living organisms. And then BSc kind of ties those concepts together to use the principles of chemistry to create new and better products. And then we have BSc versus environmental science um, and natural resources. So I've taken classes in the College of Natural Resources. Um, so, you know, like I said before, it can be tied into the coursework. Um, but overall, people with a degree in BSc will use their envi environmental knowledge to solve problems related to water quality, ecology, and watershed management. So an environmental scientist may study how pollution is harming fish living in a stream, whereas an engineer in BSc would study um, how to prevent pollution from getting in the stream in the first place, or how can we clean up uh, pollution or an oil spill or things like that um, that have already happened. We're going to open it up for a Q&A, but you might want to just write down my email address in case uh, you had questions that come up later when you're uh, thinking about all of this. So my email address is bseadvising at vt.edu. 
So it's biological systems engineering and then civil and environmental engineering is one department. Um, so your degree will say, I think, civil and environmental engineering if you major um, in civil and you just kind of take civil classes as well as environmental classes. Okay, so our next question is, do any students do study abroad or co-ops? Um, yes, I actually thought we had a study abroad slide. I think because of COVID, uh, we had taken it out from last spring. Uh, yes, so our study abroad program is, the, the main one our students do is through UC Dublin in Ireland. Um, Mostly students go spring of junior year there and they take their equivalents for senior design there so that uh, they can graduate on time. And uh, Jessica is going to put in the chat the, the link to our study abroad page. I have had students go other places. Um, the, the trick there is that you find an institution that has the courses that you would need if you stayed at Virginia Tech. And so each semester, there are going to be key courses that you need to take that are prereqs for something the immediate semester after. So as long as you can find those key courses, which you do by getting the syllabi from that institution and submitting them to our curriculum committee for um, approval, and you are aided by someone in the academic dean's office who sort of serves as the mediary, uh, mediator person uh, to ensure that all the classes you're putting forward go to the right departments, depending on if you're looking for statics or dynamics or microbio or, or some of our classes. So um, because students generally go to UC Dublin because I've already done all that work for them. And so they know exactly what they have to take over there. Uh, but I would welcome helping someone try and go elsewhere as well. I have had uh, two students go to Spain. One went to Italy. I had one go to Mexico, uh, but all the others have gone to UC Dublin. So, oh, and the co-op. The co-op was the other question. Generally speaking, we have about a half a dozen students per year that are on co-ops. Unlike study abroad, if you co-op, it is you pretty much are adding a fifth year. But what I always say is you're adding time to graduation. You're not necessarily adding money because if you co-op for an entire year, you're sitting out for a year and you're making money. So uh, that's something, you know, a lot of parents who aren't in engineering or in fields that would have needed a co-op don't quite understand that. And they just look at it as, oh my gosh, five years. It isn't really that um, because you're getting paid while you're doing it. So some students will do co-ops where they do one in the fall and a different one in the spring, either with the same company or different companies. Um, or they will do co-op one semester, study abroad the other, or they will just essentially add one semester to their date of graduation, do a co-op one semester, and then take some electives and such on the on the alternate semester. Um, but yeah, so generally I would say we have six to eight per year on co-ops. What major does biomechanics fall under? That would be the biomedical engineering department. Um, and the mechanical engineering department perhaps would also be another one that you would want to look at. But uh, if you're entirely wanting to go biomechanics as related to prosthetics, um, you would want to look at biomedical engineering. I might just have each of my uh, ambassadors here on this call just tell you about the organizations they got involved with uh, while they were here at Virginia Tech. All right, so Jess, why don't you tell us just a little bit about joining the, the Dean's team because they probably don't know what that is. Right, so the Dean's team is just one of the organizations that I'm a part of. So we do the um, daily College of Engineering information sessions um, every day from 11.15 to 12.15 Eastern Standard Time. Um, and so we talk a little bit about engineering. We also have a YouTube channel where we have the videos posted up there um, just in case you miss something. I'm also a part of NSBE, which is the National Society of Black Engineers. Um, I do, what else am I a part of? I'm part of a lot of stuff. I also do research. Also, you can do research in your department or in a different department. So I do my research in the civil department. All right, Madeline. So I am in uh, Engineers Without Borders. Uh, so I got involved in that freshman year. 
um, and have stuck with it. Um, and actually, the reason I joined BSC in the first place was um, I met with my freshman year, the president of Engineers Without Borders, who was a senior in BSC, um, and she was joining the Peace Corps, um, which is something I was interested. I'm still interested in it. Um, it looks a little different now with COVID, um, but I think kind of to turn away from this biggest question, but I think, you know, international work, um, if you're interested in that, BSC, um, the curriculum and the opportunities within the program um, definitely allow you and give you opportunities to pursue that. Um, I know a couple other people who have applied to the Peace Corps um, from BSC, um, and you know, there's professors that do international work as well. So it, it just really sets you up um, nicely if you're looking to do that kind of uh, service work. So. Um, all right, yeah. So as for some organizations that I'm in, I'm in um, the Undergraduate Biomedical Engineering Society. I'm currently the president of that. I'm in um, COVID Companions, which is like a volunteering organization. Um, I'm in two like professional fraternities. One is the pre-health one and the other one is the engineering one. And just, I do research in the biomedical engineering department. Um, but yeah, BSC has allowed me to do all these different things that I enjoy while still having time to focus on hobbies and classwork. So it's been pretty fun. I have just a real short video clip um, that I, I am going to share with you to round us out here. Hey guys, my name's Emily. I'm a senior studying biological systems engineering and I'm on the biotechnology track. I chose to go into BSE because it does a really good job of pursuing the concepts that are big in life sciences while teaching you engineering principles to solve the problems that are big in today's life science areas. So after graduation, I'm going to work in industry for a pharmaceutical company, Merck. And so far, so much of what I've learned in my BSE classes is directly translatable as to what I'm going to see in industry. And this program did a really good job preparing me for a job in the biotech industry. Hi, my name is Nick, and I'm a senior in BSC on the health professions and biotech track. Growing up, I wanted to be a physician, and at the same time, I wanted to be an engineer. So when I got to college, I hated the idea of just restricting myself into one of these categories. This was until I found an interdisciplinary major like biological systems engineering. With BSc, you don't have to be restricted into just one category, to fall on just one passion, but have the chance to embrace all of them. From the major, I was able to continue developing my skills as both an engineer and a future physician, and look to keep doing so in what I hope to become, a physician innovator, someone in service to others as a physician, but at the same time, looking to create or optimize medical devices to better serve them in the process. Hi, my name is Rachel. I'm a junior in BSc focused on watershed and environmental health. Um, I have a minor in green engineering. Um, I chose BSC because I want to make sure that our water resources stay clean for the future. We got to make sure we have enough water to drink. Um, last year, I took a co-op with a paper mill and I really enjoyed it. So hopefully in the future, I will um, become an environmental engineer at some form of industrial site um, so that I can make sure that industry doesn't continue to pollute our streams. Hey guys, my name is Kieran and I'm a senior in BSE this year. Um, so one of the main reasons I chose BSE as my major is because of the versatility. As a pre-med student, uh, BSE has allowed me to intertwine my passions for both science and engineering through taking science classes like microbio or genetics, um, as well as engineering classes like fluid mechanics or protein separation. Um, not to mention the super cool labs available too. So with the health professions path, I was able to get all my pre-med requirements relatively easily and bridge the gap between these two pretty unique fields. So following graduation, I plan on taking a gap year and attending medical school and um, hopefully becoming a physician. Hi everyone, my name's Madeline and I'm a senior studying biological systems engineering with a focus in environmental health and watershed science. I initially chose to major in BSc because I wanted a department where I could get involved in and gain that hands-on experience in. I think BSc does a great job of teaching the students the methods and processes of how to solve problems, and then providing the labs for students to work those problems out themselves. I've been in both indoor and outdoor labs where I'm surveying the cross-section of a stream and taking velocity measurements, 
which I think really exposes students to future work they could be doing. I've been doing undergraduate research for over a year now, and I think the department really encourages students to get more involved while also providing opportunities like research to get involved in. In the future, I hope to work internationally, hopefully focusing on water quality, water resources, and sustainability. Thanks and go Hokies. Hi, so why did I decide to be in BSC? Um, so I've always been interested in making products and processes possible. Um, so originally I looked into chemical engineering, um, but how chemical engineering was portrayed to me was, oh, you're doing that, but with paint and tires and things like that. And I was like, oh, those things don't interest me very much. So I was like, why don't we try doing the same thing, but with a splash of biology in it. And when you put that all together, you pretty much get BSc. Um, so let's see, what am I specializing in? I'm specializing in food engineering and biotechnology and for obvious reasons, who doesn't love food? And then I just always had a general interest in um, bacteria and enzymes and things like that. And what would I like to do in the future? So again, summing all of that up, um, uh, working in the uh, biotech space, the food space, or potentially even the cosmetic space and um, doing things like engineering support to R&D. So uh, working in that phase where you're doing research and development to generate a product and then scaling that up, um, as well as just developing processes and maintaining processes in general. So yeah, that's why I'm in BSE. I'm sure you recognize some of the people in that video. <laughs> uh, so I think we have another question here. Uh, they would like us to talk more about research that you do on campus. Who does? So Kieran, you're doing doctor shadowing. Um, so Madeline, are you involved in undergraduate research? Yes. Um, so I do research. I started it uh, my the fall of my junior junior year. Um, so what I'm doing, it's kind of complicated. So you know, just to sum it up, um, we are developing what's called a total maximum daily load, so a capacity limit for toxic chemicals in watersheds in Virginia. Um, so we're working with the Virginia Department of Environmental Quality, um, and I'm working under a BSc uh, faculty member. Um, and there's a couple other faculty members also working on the project. Um, but most of that is just dealing with huge quantities of data. So it actually translated very nicely into everything going virtual um, because I can still work. Um, and it's also been very flexible. So, um, you know, I talk with my advisor and we figure out, you know, what amount of hours will work best um, per week. And then I just complete those. Um, and it's, it's just been, I think, a great way to get involved and just, you know, understand more of what I could be doing um, in a job in the future. And Jess, do you do undergraduate research? I think you have. You want to yeah. talk to that? Yeah, I do. Um, so I do research in the civil um, and environmental engineering department. So I work under Dr. Mark Edwards. So in short, he was one of the people who figured out about the Flint, Michigan crisis. So I work with one of his PhD candidates. And so um, we, in short, we work on different types of like water filters that are basically like name brand water filters and do different tests on them because some of them claim that they can remove certain amount of lead and they really don't. Um, so different places across um, the United States will come and ask us to like test their water and things like that um, to see which, if they do have to use a filter, what would be the best filter for them to use. So this next question, Madeline, you might want to take this one. Would pollution cleanup like removing microplastics from the water fall under BSE? I would say yes, more so than civil engineering. Um, I think my kind of take on civil engineering is um, designing structures. So designing a water treatment plant, designing a wastewater treatment plant, which of course needs, you know, to remove microplastics. Um, I would say since it's more of a small scale issue dealing with water quality, um, I would say that does fall under BSC. Um, I don't know of any professors that do that specific research. I don't know, Jess, if you know any professors that do that. Um, but since it is kind of a water quality issue, um, I would say it's more of a BSC. Baltimore. Yeah, and they there was a training offer this uh, this semester in terms of like hazmat um, mm -hmm. 
hazardous waste that you need specific certifications to be able to go in and do that kind of cleanup. Mm -hmm. Um, And that was something that both civil and BSE students were um, invited to, you know, Mm -hmm. apply for that. So, Mm -hmm. Um, okay. The next one, employment prospects with BSE degrees compared to other fields. Uh, That's such a tricky question. And I know why you're asking that uh, because of the name recognition, I assume. Um, so my, my answer to that is that every department you go to at Virginia Tech and any school like it that has such high rankings with, um, their, all of their engineering disciplines, recruiters come to Virginia Tech because our students are very well prepared. Uh, so regardless of what you choose to major in, If you do well and you have internships and get involved in research and network, you are going to get a job. That that is going to be true in any department. If you don't do any undergrad experiences or get internships or do a co-op or do well academically, it will be hard to get a job. So uh, in terms of comparing our department versus others, um, basically what I tell students is if you know, in any department, you should have a job within six months. Now, COVID has been a a unique experience. Um, And obviously, the class of 2020, some of them struggled more because a lot of jobs fell through. But let's just take a non-COVID year. Most students have jobs either in the fall or the spring of their senior year, or within three to six months of graduation. If you don't have a job within six months of graduation and you have done all of those things that I said, you need to look at how you are looking for your job. Um, And that's kind of part of where I come in. I I routinely try and help students develop their professional competencies and job search strategies throughout your time here for internships, co-ops and jobs, and specifically tailor my advice and emails towards where you are at in your academic program. Now you have to read them and do the stuff. Uh, No one's going to just hand you a job because you have a piece of paper saying that you have an engineering degree from Virginia Tech. And there are students who sometimes think that that's how it works and it just does not. But our students have excellent placement and uh, about a third of our students go on to graduate school and two thirds end up in industry. And of those two thirds within five years, some of them also go back to graduate school because their current employers offer to pay for it, which is a nice thing. Panelists, can you think of anything we might not have covered that uh, you as a as a high school student might have asked that we haven't covered? Um, I would say just touching on kind of what you said, Ms. Baker, um, there's a civil and environmental uh, engineering career fair, a big one at Virginia Tech every semester. Um, and the employers there, I would say, Um, even from my freshman year to my senior year, they know what BSC is just because, you know, we have a presence there um, and we can do the jobs that they're hiring for. Um, And, you know, they have hired BSC people. Um, So like she said, it is just how you market yourself um, and, you know, what you get involved in. um, A lot of that falls on you. Um, yeah, the mar- the marketing piece is really key. And, w- and when I went through those sort of different paths during that presentation, um, your, your diploma is going to say you have a BS in BSE. It is not going to say that you focused on food or environmental health or watershed science or biotechnology or that you were pre-med. Where that comes into play is when you are marketing yourself at career fairs and in interviews and via email to potential employers. You will market yourself as a food engineer if you clustered your electives that way so that you can speak to the things that a food engineer would need to know how to do and the competencies you would need, you would speak to those and you therefore would market yourself that way. And when you're searching for an environmental health job, when you do the various pull down menus on uh, job search sites, you're going to pull for civil engineering, you're going to pull for environmental engineering, you're going to pull for ecological engineering. And same with biotechnology. When you're looking for jobs, you're going to pull for biopharmaceuticals, chemical, um, biotechnology, biomedical. It's going to depend 
on what the thrux of your coursework is, how you are going to market yourself. And the key really is marketing and networking. Uh, I just went to a training today, which I was sharing with my seniors about job search strategies. And the, the poll basically said that uh, on LinkedIn, it was 35% of jobs that students got on LinkedIn were all based on casual conversations they had on someone's wall on LinkedIn, not even in response to an actual job. Uh, but you are networking all the time and you don't even realize it. You're networking in your dorm, at your clubs, in line at Starbucks. You are always networking. So, so you have to get over the fear and anxiety associated with networking in terms of walking into a career fair. It really is the same premise. You want to get to know them. You want them to know what you have to offer. You want to know what they have to offer. Just like when you're talking to someone at a club that you haven't met before, you know, you exchange information and you get information, you give information. Uh, you're you're always doing that. So you just have to get more adept at how to do it um, in terms of job searching. So yeah, I I really try to help develop those competencies as you go, but you do, it is work and you have to be open to it and do the work. Anything else, Karen, you wish you, you know, could have asked as a high school student that they haven't asked or we haven't covered? Or just uh, I think we covered everything, but I think one kind of cool thing to point out is like this major is really unique. I'm um, just like talking to some of my friends in other departments and stuff. Like um, we have a super tight knit community. Like I know some of the friends I've made in BSC because it's like pretty small. Um, our lifelong friends, like truly, and it's been like an awesome experience. Like you get really close with Miss Baker because the department size is pretty small, so she can help you out like in ways that other advisors just are not able to. So it's it's been really cool. Like honestly, like this major is a really unique one, I think. And Jess, what about you? Any anything you think maybe we didn't cover that you'd like to hit on? Um, nothing that I can really think of. Okay. Like you guys hit on everything. Um, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we will sign off. My email again is bseadvising at vt.edu. Uh, and if you wanted to talk to any of these panelists further, I can pass their emails on to you if there, you had specific questions for any of them. And I really thank you for coming this evening and go Hokies.